I was already tutoring anatomy at this point, so I thought, I disagree with this doctor, and luckily there's multiple doctors on staff. So I took my sheet over to another doctor, and the doctor said, hey, who said refer this guy out? He takes his spin, scratches it out. Berg, you get in there and adjust that guy. If you don't adjust him, he's going to pop. <laughs> so I mean, he was a big Texas guy. You know, he's kind of forceful. I, I loved him. Dr. Miller. Um, so I adjusted him, and instantly, well, within 45 minutes, half hour later, his blood pressure was down to 140 over 90, 145 over 90. And so I said, it's still high, but get some water. Okay, your body self rate. No, you're supposed to say, wow, that's amazing. You know, sure enough, 15 years later, they did a study at Chicago Memorial. Okay, but this right here shows that your body is self regulating. To treat it with a toxic chemical may tax the system more. That's just flat out foolish. Okay, so now here, here's some rebels. Now, we all got the same, remember, same trade school training. Medical doctors, chiropractic doctors, osteopathic doctors, okay? Now, what would make a guy write a book like this called Reversing Heart Disease? Now, he's got training. Did, do you think that he had similar clinical experiences that I did? Yes. Oh my gosh, we don't need to treat heart disease with, with drug or chemical therapies that we can override that fact and the body self-healing. He wrote this book 25 years ago. What if we have a condition that's going to affect about half of America? How about diabetes? Here's a guy that wrote Cure for Diabetes. Wait, do you see treat diabetes up there or do you see cure? Cure. cure. Good. I thought I wasn't seeing things. Okay, yeah. Cure for diabetes, type 2. Within four days, he gets these patients off of their medications. Within 30 days, they're cured. They don't have diabetes anymore. He wrote the book. Did he have different training or did he have a different precept on how human beings function? Yeah. Here's a guy, Confessions of a Medical Heretic, because that's what it is. Heretic means that you're not practicing a dogmatic belief of human beings. What you're taught in medical school and chiropractic school and osteopathic school is a dogmatic approach. You do this, you get this result. That's inconsistent with health. He broke from that dogma, and now he's actually against vaccinations, against medicine. It is a heretical approach because he's promoting health now and not disease. Now, this is going to be another lesson. The nervous system controls every function of the body. It controls heart rate, blood pressure, cholesterol, every function. Every function of the body is controlled by the nervous system. Oh! Water. Did you get scared? I was scared just now. Okay. I know you. No, no, you're not scared. You're scared. Okay. Right now, what happens when your body's being chased by a tiger? What happens to heart rate? It goes up. Heart rate, blood pressure, blood sugar go up. This is a normal stress response. Under physical, chemical, and emotional stress, your body responds like it's being chased by a tiger. So heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up, blood sugar goes up. So now, can you take a drug? To lower the heart rate. Yeah. yeah, you still got the stress. Can you take a drug to lower the blood pressure? Yeah. yeah, a bunch of them. You still got the stress. What about lowering the blood sugar? Yeah, of course, metformin and everything else. Can you lower LDL cholesterol? Yeah, no one's arguing that the drugs don't work. But does that go after the source of the stress? Yeah. And how effective is that if your body has that stress response to reduce the physiology? Does that make you healthier or sicker? I don't know. Let's use science. Because remember, I don't like dogmatic approaches in anything. I'm not pro-chiropractic, I'm pro-human. And if there's something that helps humans, that's better. First off, let's look at medical textbooks. Harrison's medical textbook. First principle of the therapy of hypertension is the knowledge of when to treat and when not to. So does that mean that if somebody has a condition that requires higher blood pressure, if you lower it, do you harm that person? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you could infer that. I would, that would make sense to me. High blood pressure is simply an elevation on a blood pressure meeting. Um, it's just a, a different reading on a machine. It doesn't mean that there's a problem. That's why they have over 100 drugs to explain it. Now, why would drug in the heart be a bad idea? So first off, physical, chemical, or emotional stress. Let's say that you have a history of smoking. Okay, history of smoking. Do you think that's going to clog the arteries? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, it has to.
because smoking damages the arteries. The arteries are going to be protected by a layer of calcium, fibrin, and, and cholesterol. Let's say you have a history of eating fast food. That's also going to close the arteries down. Let's say you have a, a history of toxic exposure. It's going to close the arteries down. So your body is going to have to increase pressure to get blood or oxygen be beyond those arteries. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, so now let's say if you drug the heart due to placking or anything else, the heart has to work twice as hard to push the blood through. That makes sense. Um, so the blood pressure gauges will read normal. So let's say we have someone with atherosclerosis, with arterial placking, which is thickening of the blood, okay, diabetes, and they have to have higher blood pressure in order to get oxygen to the body. You drug the heart so that forces the blood pressure down. Now we have a better reading on this. This is a blood pressure checker. Okay. We have a better reading on this, but the problem is, do we make the person healthier or we're just getting a better reading on that? Okay, okay, so what happens to the oxygen level of the tissue that this person's being supplied? Oxygen level goes down. So if you have decreased oxygen, decreased circulation, oxygen deficit, heart muscle degeneration, enlargement of the heart, degeneration of any organ or tissue, <coughs> not getting blood, lung congestion, premature aging, and early death. But by gosh, we got a lower reading on this machine. <laughs> Can you see the foolishness of this? This is dogma. So if any patient calls me up and says, oh, my blood pressure was high, and I say, good, can you understand that I'm saying, yes, your body's self-regulating from dehydration, physical, chemical, or emotional stress, your body's elevating that pressure for a freaking reason. Oh, gosh, that makes sense. Okay, this is a great one. The drugs they use to supply, okay, to, to force the blood pressure down, beta blockers, angi and ACE inhibitors, this also says, due to these drugs, they have long-term destructive side effects, early death from heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. I'm sorry, what are the killers of America? Heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Do you think blood pressure drugs are common? Yes, sir. yes, yeah, absolutely. And again, these are out of all of these medical journals. Um, they handicap the heart by blocking the nerves that control the heart muscle. Gee, that doesn't sound good at all, does it? No, okay. Um, they force... The body is now being forced to go through life with less oxygen than it needs. Is oxygen important to you? Oh, yeah. yeah, and in fact, I'm going to show you the crazy stuff, how if you put more oxygen in the body, it lowers blood pressure. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, um, again, dogmatic approach, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs cause 20% of all heart failures. But also, now this is Tylenol, Advil, Motrin, okay, all the non steroidal anti-inflammatories. I actually saw an article for peak performance, take Advil. Okay, now, now also, and it says beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, those are again blood pressure medications, increase the risk of heart failure. Okay, I'm sorry, what, what were the drugs prescribed for? You have high blood pressure and it could damage the heart or kidneys or something else, okay? Okay, and it actually causes heart failure? Advil and Aleve make blood pressure wise. How many people have a sore muscle. And that dogmatic approach that from trade school thinking, you're supposed to take this Advil, Tylenol, or Motrin. Oh my gosh, blood pressure rises. I'm sorry, let's look at this backwards. It's not the drug that's causing it to rise, although it does because it's a toxic chemical to your system. But under pain, what happens to blood pressure? It goes up. Is that a normal physiologic response for you to handle that discomfort? Yes or yes? yes. Absolutely. Gosh, that's dumb. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. This one here, 80,000 women involved in that study. That was smart. Okay. Ignorance and arrogance. I had to put this slide up a second time. Can you see the ignorance and arrogance? What does that couple to health in America? A third with diabetes, five out of six with heart disease and cancer. You know, it's not good. Now, is one number good for everyone? No. no. Cheyenne, can I borrow you a second? Come here. Okay, now, my niece is right here. Here, just hold up your arm. Should, should this arm and this arm have the same blood pressure? No, okay, common sense not, okay? Now, is she a 50-year-old chiropractor with multiple injuries? No, she's a cute little niece. She's like one of my favorite humans. Okay, so, so now, obviously, if you knew that for every one pound of extra fat, there's a mile of blood vessels, if you're 30 pounds overweight, 30 more miles, my heart has to pump blood through. Do you think that I need higher blood pressure? Yes or yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. It's foolish.